Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today, we are talking about Darwin's Game. This was uh, Rick's Choice. Uh, producer for it was Annie Plex, studio of Nexus. Genres were action, mystery, shonen. And it was uh, 11 episodes long. Surprisingly short, to be perfectly honest. I was expecting 12 to 14. And when I was, <laughs> when I found out, that it was only 11 um, by pure accident because I was thinking, oh, they probably just skipped a week. I don't know why. And uh, yeah, and I was sorely, sorely, um, I don't know how to say it. Not so, sorely, sorely. Uh, disappointed? Disappointed, yeah. But that's a good word. Sorely disappointed by the fact that it was just done. Especially since they left a teaser at the very end of the last episode. Right. And this uh, series is actually really new. It uh, aired between January 2020 all the way through March 2020. One of the reasons why they actually only did 11 episodes is because episode one, if I remember correctly, is actually 45 minutes long. So it's uh, two episodes basically in length. Yeah, they did that. But they also did that with Shield Hero, which is why I was really happy to think that this was a trend that would continue. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, like if you were to do what Darwin's game did, you could say that Shield Hero should have been 26 episodes long. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair, 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 fair. But still, it was huge, huge relief to see that it was not a steaming pile of crap because most anime, recently at least, start in a really good area and they have the very first two or three episodes go insanely strong and then they just they they can't seem to continue with the momentum either the story gets stagnant or the ideas go down i I don't know but this maintained a nice high level of quality i guess is a good way to put it the entire way through it definitely was a little unique uh When it was first airing, we talked a little bit about it in uh, the Discord when it was first coming out. And I I have to echo what I said before. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a King's Game, just not nearly as screwed up. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, it's like a cross between like King's Game and uh, Magical Girls. And, and I can, the I can app interface that. for it, right? Definitely had that vibe, that feel for it. King's Game in that once you're pulled into this thing unwillingly, you're you're kind of SOL, just like in Magical Girls as well. True. Um, True. Okay, I, I can definitely see the, the similarities between Magic Girl and this. I just think they, if they go on the same route, that would be a huge disappointment in my personal opinion. That's kind of the feeling I got from it, especially at the end. The thing that gets me about this whole scenario about this, uh, where does the money come in? Because in magic girl, money was never a thing. Whereas here they're using actual currency. Like if you wanted to cash in your points, this is an amazing way to do so. The problem is the points are your literal life points. If they go to zero, you die you assume you die and it's not a a clean death. I mean, it's clean and there's no actual cleanup other than, you know, the chunks of concrete that are missing. Right. But you, as you're disappearing, your eyes and brain can be gone, but your mouth still talks, which makes me think that maybe they're not actually dying. They're just being schlepped off to this holding area until the game's done kind of thing, you know? Uh. I don't know. Also, for the points, I don't think it's your literal life points uh, because no one ever really states that. Uh, the only time where it comes in to play where if you don't have enough points, guess what? You're all dead. Uh, comes in towards the end at a, for episode 11 after all the events have transpired, which most of it takes place during one singular event. Yeah, that, that's where it solidified it for me. But in the very beginning, do you remember when his friend was like, crap, I'm sorry you, to bring you into this, but like, here's what happens. If you end up dying, he gets all your points. Right. Or if you lose too much, he gets all your points. 
And in, in technically, the invisible dude, the invisible panda baseball bat guy at the very beginning, he didn't die because of a car crash. He died because his points got taken. Like, he would have survived that, I think. There was no way he was going to be able to uh, move around after that. Not easily, but th- like as you saw, uh, as you saw later on, you, they can fix an arm being chopped off. Yeah, but it's because of that one person's sigil, and she would have to be willing to do that. I don't think she'd be willing to. You have a point, but I, I can't say that her sigil was so unique. You know, it might be. It might. It might be. Um, well, everyone has their own unique sigil. Yeah, yeah. That is, we didn't actually touch on that. You're right. Uh, sorry, we're jumping around a bit, but yeah, no, everyone's got their own unique power essentially. So basically how this whole thing starts off, uh, we have our main protagonist, uh, Kaname and he, he's being drawn into this game, Darwin's game by a friend, not, not willingly pulled in. He's just trying to get some help or some kind of help because, uh, Konami's friend is being hunted to the death by the rookie hunter by the rookie hunter. And when he clicks on this app to download it, the snake comes out and bites him in the neck and it gives him basically gives him a barcode and a power, a sigil. Now his sigil, you don't know what it is, especially when the other uh, main character uh, Shuka is talking to him about it. She's like, well, you should just know what it is. You should have this uh, already basic understanding what it is. It, it should be as natural as breathing. And he doesn't know. And when he looks at his at the app where it should tell him what his uh, sigil is, it just says error. Yeah, he gets a very unique. Of course, he gets a very unique sigil, a newer, much more rarer sigil than anybody's ever given and you find out later on he essentially has the god of fire or god of iron god of creation if he holds something in his hand he can duplicate it when he loses when he loses concentration it dissipates right and and what the sigil is actually called uh uh, i i think they said it a couple different ways but it's like supposed to be flame god's hammer or the iron the flame god of iron or something like that and yeah, basically it's a blacksmith and it, so he can't create just anything he wants and he'll know inherently what he can and can't duplicate just by touching it. So if he touches it, he can duplicate it and he can even push things beyond their, uh, limitation. So he can fabricate a gun and then have uh, high efficiency bullets or have uh, armor turn it into armor piercing rounds or whatever else and or have it set so that way it pushes the life of the gun makes it shorter because it doesn't matter but has that increased firepower yeah case in point when he was about to die he had a naruto esque ex- naruto esque experience where when naruto's about to die he talks to his demon or his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> the nine tails in this particular case, right when he's about to die, he's gets sat in front of his, um, uh, I'm going to call it an avatar. Cause I don't know what else to call it. His inner sigil starts kind of like talking to him, but not really. And he gains a much deeper understanding. And he goes, you know what? Not only, I, I don't have the ability to copy. I have the ability to understand everything about this creation. And if I just add more here to the gunpowder, I can make the output of the bullets this much greater. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, if he was to create a 357 Magnum and because he has perfect knowledge and perfect construction of this weapon, he can literally have a hand cannon that has a one bullet lifespan and just simply spam that. True, but it does take a toll on him every time he yeah. produces. Yeah. I, the way I envisioned it was very much like uh, magic points in a game. It's a limited amount that regenerates over time. 
At least that's how I saw it. Does that make no, sense? Uh, that makes perfect sense because uh, that's actually what they say. They even say, I'm completely spent. If you give me some time to rest, I'll be, I'll be good again. So you do have to rest. You can't just sit there and spam it constantly without repercussions. And, and one of the main villains um, for this Wang, he even <laughs> says, I can do this once, maybe twice. I can, I can do teleport one or two more times. And mentally, he's saying that. And everything, all of them have a limitation on it. So the thing I never understood about Wang is specifically how his sigil worked. Like, how does teleportation equal chopping limbs off, specifically cleanly with fingers? Yeah, see, that's one of the things that I also had a difficulty understanding. Um, also, it's not like he can alter the fabrics of of uh, reality, right? It his moment or his motions are predetermined still even to that point. And the reason why I bring this up rain, she basically can has the ability of foresight. She can, she knows what every living atom in the earth or world are doing at any given point in yeah, time. Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. She uses the Schrodinger's cat or Str- Schrodinger's cat. Something like that. I forget what it is, but basically her sigil allows if she takes an action, she can see, the logical um, progression. I think but, what you're saying so, is uh, what what you mean is uh, Laplace's demon, or oh, as her, no. yeah, uh, which is a yeah. hypothetical being that knows the exact location and momentum of every atom in the universe. Um, and yep. her sigil is called Worldwide Function. Yeah. So Laplace's demon. I actually knew this a while ago. Um, I can't believe I messed that up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so the the theory of Flapless's demon is if you know the exact location of any one atom, the mo the the movement that it's going, the speed in reference to its surroundings, moving forward from there, you can use logic and dictate where it will be at any point in time in the future. And that is a popular way to say that if you know everything about any one particular thing you know everything about everything else any any interaction it does anything it comes in contact with is now part of your purview mathematically speaking it does not vary from your calculations assuming your calculations are correct the thing i don't get the thing i don't get is when she was using her sigil for the laplace's demon wang was not part of that wang showed up as a surprise to her. At least that's the way it looked like. Well, and and that's how it was interpreted because even she had said something like, why is he here? And it's like, well, you should know. I mean, like if you know about him, if you know the kind of guy he is, then you would know that he would just be there. Now here's the, uh, and he would have been there within a five meter radius because he even states before that his, or, or it's not even stated before, but they even explain that he has a limitation of five meters. Now, do you think, I just thought of this, and it makes, it makes a certain kind of sense to me if teleportation is not limited to himself. If he can teleport other things. For instance, if he can teleport a very thin line of, of flesh of your finger essentially he teleports a section of your finger away and that in itself would remove whatever is not attached to your body so if i was to remove your middle knuckle via teleportation the rest of your finger would fall off now imagine refining that to a paper thin line that would give you uh, the illusion of slicing fingers off or as he did before cut through a door using the teleportation. And when you cut through a door, you're cutting through the people behind the door. That's the only way I can just, that I can understand his teleportation equaling slicing people to bits. Yeah. And that's probably about it too. I mean, they don't really go into the details of how each, uh, how each sigil works. They just 
do a real basic uh, description of this is what it does. And it's like, cool, bro. Cool story. Yeah. But uh, so in your opinion, I mean, this is my opinion, but uh, in your opinion, does it make sense that each sigil is under, under interpretation? Like the limitation is only your understanding of it. Cause that would make sense for the, with the, the, the fire, the, the iron fire thing, the, uh, what was it called? The flame God of hammers or iron or whatever yeah. for Konami. So his understanding increased about his sigil, his ability to use a sigil increased. And maybe, maybe the same things with this guy, his understanding of teleportation wasn't limited to, I can move from one place to another, or I can use my ace in the hole or I can switch places with someone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a pretty interesting theory behind it. I, and I can totally see that too. I, I, I totally see that your, your limitation is based on your understanding of what your sigil is and what it can do. Dude, that would be amazing. Imagine if you had a different sigil or you used, <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, right? Like, that totally coincides with the mentality of how they do the event, right? So they do the event and they're talking about uh, the rules and what you have to do and everything like that. And if you have at least three at the end of the game, you'll still be there. And, and then once you start reading it and rereading it and then truly trying to understand the fundamentals behind it, that's when you truly understand the real meaning of the game and how to actually complete it. Well, I mean, it makes sense because the way understanding if, and I can't believe I just thought of this. If understanding is tantamount to everything there, everything is not necessarily what it seems. It's what your understanding allows you to perceive. For instance, you're right in that, in that group event, so to speak, their understanding of the game changed with more information his sigil changed with more information yep so instead of it being a hey we need these this many rings in order to complete the game wait no that's not what it says it says get this or and you'll pass or if the game is completed wait a second they don't have enough rings for everybody is the intention to kill everybody or is the intention to find a, a, another answer yep uh, your your understanding expands so maybe another answer is present Exactly. And that's one of the things, right? So basically all those people that were killed or that died off didn't really need to. True. If they would just work together, but everyone <laughs> for some weird reason is bloodthirsty. Of course. Wouldn't you be? Depending on my, depending on what my sigil would be. <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious. What do you think your sigil would be? I don't know. I don't speculate on the what ifs simply because my sigil would probably be something lame. Like, <laughs> like telling the truth like, like that one guys uh yeah lie detector <laughs> yeah Ryuji's. Could, could you imagine if his understanding was just limited and his sigil's limitation wasn't simply just lie detector but he could exude or he could make other people believe the lie that would be awesome that would be awesome and it definitely is you know interesting to think about i would i would love to see like more information on it. And I, I feel like if they do come out with the season two, there would be more information on it. Or if we read the manga, I, I have a feeling that we may be able to get some more information based off of the, off of it. True. I, I hate to say it. I'm not a manga reader. Like If I really get involved with something, I might attack on Titan. For instance, I did read some of the manga, but for something like, like this, they didn't have it long enough to to draw me into the point where I want to read the manga. Yeah. It wasn't cliffhangery enough, if that makes any sense. Yeah, basically the sense of it was it'll just be a rinse and repeat. And this is why I, I said, like I said earlier, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a Magical Girl uh, project is the guy never said he created the game. Yeah, he never gave the impression, at least to me, that he created it. He just, it made it feel like he was the current holder, so to speak, of the game. He was the current game master. Exactly. And this is really brought to light, too, at the end of the event for them. When he 
says, I am the current game master, basically. And yeah. what's interesting, too, is he says there's only two ways out of this, out of it. And one of the ways is to complete the game. What's the true objective of the it all fo- it all comes back to understanding. You don't have enough understanding of the game. I thought it was genius. Genius that he used his uh, the main character used his um, I don't know if you're going to call it privilege as a, as a special privilege event winner. Yeah. yeah, special privilege as an event winner to create the bankrupt thing. The the um all in all yeah, or nothing. All That's in. what it was. It was all yeah. or nothing. So yeah, basically you if he puts everything in, right, and he uses it and you can't at least match that when they win, then you basically lose your entire clan too. So essentially when you go to war and everything revolves around points, Wang specifically went to war with with <laughs> with the main character and in that war, typically the loser would only give up a certain amount of coins, a certain percentage of whatever they agree upon. This loophole basically says if you don't hold majority of the chips or all, or a greater amount of chips, you could potentially lose your not only your life, but your clan's life. And that is a massive deterrent. Just imagine. Just imagine. Right. It would be like going into a poker game. And you're like, hey, I've got a hundred thousand, and the guy's like, yeah, I've got three million. If we're gonna do this first hand all in, what you got? You're gonna be super hesitant because you're gonna be like, well, this is not only my income and what I'm gonna use to eat, but this is also my entire family's family's families behind me. Well, do here's I really the thing: no one that? else knows of his uh, special privilege, and it's a pri- really? special privilege that's only available to the clans. Right, or to him for the clan. And that's See, I thought- that's why he says, Wang says to uh, Konami, I'll give you 1800 that should be enough, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And then Konami says to Wang, he's like, no, 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 no. You see, I have a special privilege. It's called all or nothing. If you don't at least match what I have, yeah, you lose everything. The crazy thing is I thought for some reason that was broadcast. No, I, I actually no no. Check this out. The, the 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 information broker who's on his team. Wouldn't that be a great way to get it out to get the word out about the special privilege? Yeah, why would you want to get it out there when it's your trump card? As a deterrent. No, that wouldn't be a deterrent because you'd get people like Wang wanting to come in there and sideswipe you because it's a double edged sword. I would assume. I would think it would be mutually assured destruction. Right. That, so that's the only thing all that of. would do is ensure people are coming up to him or have a plan to attack him. So that way they could make sure he's wiped out, period. And I would also assume that it's not always active. It's only active when he wants to have it active. I could see that. Because you see him end. go into the settings after the battle or, or ju- just before it starts, the, the clan war. You see him go into the settings after that to to do something but they don't that show you what sense. it is yeah it was suspenseful don't get me wrong and i thought it was pure justice but i don't know i, I just i like the fact that wang got his comeuppance oh yeah i like the fact that wang was handled so uh, i'm not gonna say elegantly but but thoroughly appropriately appropriate yeah, that's a good way to put it. appropriately so here's um, another question for you sir uh, mm-hmm. Konami's friend who was kidnapped, who then, uh, got drawn into the, uh, Darwin's game. Yep. Why didn't he disappear? He did. He didn't disappear right away, but he did, he did end up blocking out. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? The, the box was still there when you're disappearing, when you're blocking out. Now the vision that, uh, Konami has, it shows him blocked out, Right. He's in the school yeah. classroom and shows him his friends blocked out, but he's at the box and the body is still there. And normally when you're blocked out, it's not just you. It's like if you're leaning up, laying on the ground or if you're leaning up against something that gets blocked out too a little bit. The box was still there. So you're right. The box was still there. My only thought as far as that's concerned 
is maybe like Wang didn't kill him completely un- until he showed up, you know? Yeah. And but at the same guess- time, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure he was dead because, well, here's, here's part of the problem that I'm getting at. Um, remember the florist yeah. after he died, he didn't disappear right away. But as for everyone else, once they died, they started disappearing almost immediately. I got nothing for that. I, I, I genuinely don't know. Is it like I didn't special case it, scenarios know. in which some people do block away right away and others don't? I don't know. The only thing I can think of as far as the florist is his sigil was still active, you know? So his sigil was, was still active, which is why he didn't go away immediately. The sigil had to stop working or stop. I don't know. I honestly don't know. That's a, that'd be a good thing to ask. There, there are a lot of questions for this. And More important, quite, well, the most important question is, do you think there's going to be a season two? I think there could be a season two. I, I, I believe they pushed hard enough for it that I will hope that there is a season two because it ends with him basically being in another event. Yeah. I don't know if that, see, in my head, that's like season two in the middle. Because mm-hmm. he's already complaining, like, this is complete BS. I can't believe this is going on. Now, we were on Discord earlier, or earlier in the week, and uh, I believe a new guy coming in, uh, Bookish. Yeah. He mentioned that he doesn't believe there will be a season two. I hope he's wrong. But, I mean, it's open to discussion. That's what the, the, That's kind of what our Discord's there for, you know? Yeah, that's true. That is very true. Um, there's one more thing. I, I hate how uh, hypocritical Konami became. Seriously, though. Yeah, like at first he was like, I don't want to kill anyone. I don't want, we all need to live. We should all get together, get along together and everything else. And he was all about, you know, symbiotic relationships and everything like that. And then he met an, uh, uh, an assassin. And, you know, he's like, after the event, he's like, I'm a total total badass and and then it then progresses to i don't want to kill anyone i'm just going to murder everyone and then (laughs) when he defeats wang's clan and they're all taken out he's taking over all the territories and he's basically setting up a, a a safe haven where darwin's game is basically prohibited within his area which is wang's area that he took over And people were trying to set it up and he's murdering and literally everyone is being murdering everyone that's trying to set up territory in there and leaving one person alive. And the response is I'm leaving you alive so that way you could tell everyone that Darwin's game's not allowed here. It's like, wait, so you have a game going on and you're setting it up in Darwin's game to have a Darwin's game area be disallowed. And you're murdering everyone just for that. <laughs> well, I mean, I can see, I can see the philosophy behind it. The philosophy he started with was that of a pacifist. And then it transformed from pacifism to activism. And then from activism to something more extreme. Well, let's call it extremism for, <laughs> let's just call it what it is. Murder. Yeah. Murder. <laughs> Well, I mean, he goes from, you're right, he goes from, uh, it is what it is, to we can try to change it, to he snapped. And I think him snapping is something that is relatable. For instance, if you and I were in that situation and something like that were to happen to you, I would go and say, like, I would snap and retribution would be had, which I assume would be the same in reverse situations. True. But... Like I, I, I feel for the guy. He lost his third and and probably most innocent friend, all because of his own personal actions in his yeah. mind, and it sucks. And when I saw the, <laughs> when, when I saw the cliffhanger of that episode where it goes click, and then that that face, I'm like, I got super hyped for the next episode. Yeah, I was like, this is gonna be so badass. You just unleashed. The sleeping giant and i don't, I don't know I, it was a beautiful combination of everything i wanted and everything that was required he just went ballistic 
And he realized that he cannot be as naive as to think that everyone will go along with his ideal. That to be a king, if you would, of this game, you need to be assertive and you need to make the decisions that, for lack of a better word, hurt your own soul. And he also became a excellent marksman overnight. <laughs> I think, honestly, that came with his sigil. Like, uh, uh, perfect... Uh, well, think about it. Perfect understanding of the tool you're using allows for a higher compatibility. If I know everything about a knife in my hand, let's say I'm chopping onions, and I know every angle and every millimeter of where everything's going to go, I can use this thing with confidence. If I have a so hammer in I'm my gonna, hand. If you have that, that instantly makes you a better uh, sword fighter. I mean, like, is that what you're saying? I would think so. I would I, think I so. Would, I would so hope long. so. I mean, like, I know that's not what's going to happen. You can know <laughs> the philosophy behind it all, but that doesn't make well, no, you, you an excellent fighter. That doesn't make you an excellent anything. I know how to perfectly chop this. Cool. Well, think about that. You, you, you're still going to die. <laughs> True. Practice makes perfect. However, if you, as his sigil was stated, it, it's it's like breathing. And when he understands the weapon almost naturally as if he was born with this knowledge, if you're born with a sword in your hand, that's not yeah, but that's just a for sword. the knowledge of, of the sigil. You should know how to use your sigil using your sigil to create stuff, something it should come as natural as breathing, not using your sigil and knowing how to properly use a weapon. Uh, you okay you you have a point there i will i I will surrender that point however i feel that knowing the weapon having to have an intimate knowledge of it you should be able to use it as you would use it as as well as you think you should does that make sense dude i know a lot of people that know their weapons very intimately and i guarantee you they are not using it the way it should and they are pretty (laughs) pretty horrible so you know what but they're not an anime and that makes all the difference. Fair enough. I will concede to that. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So I think this is a great spot. Uh, scale of up to 10, sir. How would you rate this? Honestly, an eight. I was teetering between seven and eight. Seven because of the way it ended. But if I take that last 20 minutes out, I think that if they would have just taken, well, not 20 minutes, if they took the last, let's say, five minutes out of their little sneak preview, that was an awesome open and shut season. All right. I felt, I felt that it was good. So I'm going to go with an eight. I, I actually echo you. I actually have to say this is an eight. It's good. I didn't like that. They kind of pushed uh, season two really hard. It kind of lost me on how hypocritical uh, Konami became, but overall it was a pretty good, pretty good show. It definitely does remind me a lot of magical girl projects. So I would be really disappointed if it followed something similar to that. Agreed. Agreed. So next week is my choice. Yeah. I was going to say, what about next? What, 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 uh, what monstrosity are you going to lay on me this week? Somali and the forest spirit. Oh, I've had the, wow. Okay. That's done. Yeah. Oh, yep. that's worrisome. I've already seen episodes one through six. I did enjoy it as a, I would say as an epic tale, not necessarily as an anime, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it, it delivers better. Yeah. I've seen the first couple of episodes. Um, it actually came out pretty recently. It's 12 episodes long, January, 2020, uh, genres are adventure, drama, fantasy, and slice of life. I definitely see that. Oh yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, If you have a recommendation on what we should watch, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, If you feel like we missed something, we got something wrong, or if you just want to plain old say that we are wrong in general, feel free to do so. You can reach out to us on our Discord. A link for that is in the show notes. Um, You can also email us at featuredanimepodcast at gmail.com. Tweet at us at thoseanimeguys at Featured Anime Podcast on Facebook. And if you're watching this on YouTube, or rather listening to this on YouTube, you can also leave a comment there and let us know how we're doing or give a recommendation or anything else. Be happy to respond to you on there. Until next time, I'm Jack. And I'm Rick.
and we'll see you next time.